President of the United States. This broadcast is as much for him as it is for the rest of us. It is a warning, really, but we won't get ahead of ourselves. Listen first to these words from the last inauguration. When that first cocaine was smuggled in on a ship, it may as well have been a deadly bacteria so much as it hurt the body, the soul of our country. But take my word for it, this scourge will stop. These are familiar images that give the impression the U.S. is getting somewhere in the war against drugs. American agents raiding a jungle laboratory. Burning mounds of confiscated coca leaves and processed cocaine. The big pile is the leaf, the coca leaf that has been seized, and there's a couple of tons, probably close to four tons of leaf in that pile. We have approximately 500 kilograms of uh, cocaine that is burning in that small uh, oven. This operation is designed to not only shut down the Chapari, but to close it off permanently. The Chapari is the second biggest producer of coca in, uh, in, in the hemisphere. This is where the cocaine comes from, and this is where American money and manpower are going. The Andean countries of South America, Bolivia, Colombia, and Peru. More than a billion dollars over the past three years. The Drug Enforcement Administration, U.S. Army Special Forces, U.S. Navy, Air Force, CIA, Border Patrol, and the Coast Guard, they're all here. I'm optimistic we're going to win this in Bolivia. The Bolivians are going to win this, and we're going to help, try to help them as much as we can. How do I see, as an American living in Chicago, Detroit, Los Angeles, Santa Fe, how do I see how you're doing? Well, what I'd hope you'd see is that, one, you don't just live in Chicago or Santa Fe or New York anymore. You're a citizen of the world, and you can't isolate yourself from this problem. And the problems that you have with drugs doesn't start in Chicago. It starts in that little hectare down in the Chapari Valley where that coca is grown. Bolivian President Jaime Pazamora's government receives more American aid than any other country in South America, nearly $350 million in the last 24 months alone. When we asked the United States government where we could go to see the war against drugs at its most effective, they told us to come here, to Bolivia. These are the Drug Enforcement Administration's Bolivian partners, the Special Anti-Narcotics Police Force, paid for and trained by the United States. There's a lot riding on the U.S.-Bolivian relationship because in every other Andean country, the U.S. war against drugs has been overwhelmed. In Colombia, after a decade of drug-related terrorism and assassinations, the government has cut a deal with the traffickers and refuses to extradite them to the United States. In Peru, in the midst of a continuing guerrilla war, the constitution is suspended and the drugs keep flowing because the traffickers are paying off both the guerrillas and the army. And now, take a close look at Bolivia. This is the place the U.S. government said was its best hope. It's now become its only hope. The poorest country in South America, one in every five people in the workforce, owe their economic survival to the drug traffickers. The U.S. has intensified the fight against hundreds of thousands of Bolivians who wish to keep the drugs flowing out and the drug money flowing in. President Clinton will inherit a cocaine war in Bolivia that the United States can not win. Tonight, we'll show you why. Peter Jennings reporting. The Cocaine War, lost in Bolivia.
Brought to you by Tavis D. When your sinus and nasal congestion feels this bad, what can you do? Last year, you wanted to call the doctor. Last year, you wanted a prescription. But this year, Tavis D in its full prescription strength is available without a prescription. Just one tablet helps relieve 12 hours worth of painful congestion and sneezing. Guess what? I'll be there after all. Tavis D. One tablet, 12 hours, and now no prescription. Going, going fast. $10 million next month. There's going to be a new $10 million winner at American Family next month. You may have the winning entry right now in the only sweepstakes with my picture. If I hadn't entered, someone else would have my prize. If I hadn't entered, someone else would have my prize. Don't miss out. Don't risk forfeiting millions. I'll be handing over the $10 million prize just weeks from now. Hurry, enter today. When you receive your pre-approved Discover Card application, mm. sign it. Oh, thank you. Because you can't earn cash back until you get it back. Oh. It pays to discover. Do your holiday shopping with the Discover Card, and you'll not only give, you'll receive a cash back bonus for every charge. It pays to discover. Son, what do you think of when you think of Florida? Florida orange juice and me, right? No, just Florida orange juice. Oh, well, I'm going to be the official spokesman for Florida orange juice, and I'm perfect for it. I think fact, I'm perfect for it. It's full of vitamin C and minerals. There's pure, natural, get up and go in every glass. 100% pure Florida orange juice. Or get you on your feet. That's my line. Just be cute. OK, go ahead and try it. 100% pure Florida orange juice. Get you on your feet. Trust me, Dad. I'll sell it. You do the cute part. Tomorrow, highlights of a surprising year in the world of sports. Hi, I'm Joan London. And I'm Mike Schneider. Also keeping track of the new year with great new calendars. Plus a fashion shoot with supermodel Isabella Rossellini on Good Morning America tomorrow. A fertility doctor for childless couples, but sometimes the sperm was his. Was the doctor making his own babies? Didn't you think twice about using your own sperm? More doctors use their sperm than people know. An investigation. Watch primetime Thursday. There's an irony to the escalation of the cocaine war in Bolivia. In spite of the U.S. claim that Bolivia is the country where the war can be won, despite the increase in funding, despite the presence of so many American agencies from the CIA to the Border Patrol, despite all of that, we found the real work of the drug war, stopping the drugs and capturing the traffickers, is really done by very few people. In a country that produces a third of the world's cocaine, there are 30 agents from the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. 30 agents in a country the size of Texas and California combined. Sundance 855, Sundance 855, Piper 1. The 30 agents spend most of their time on missions like this, a stakeout to capture a small plane coming to pick up a load of cocaine. One o'clock, uh, we'll be standing by on this push and we'll be going to the primary day at 6 a.m. Do copy? A DEA team has infiltrated undetected and is now hiding in the jungle waiting for the plane near an airstrip, or pista as it's called in Spanish. This is their backup team. Their job is to maintain constant radio contact with the team in the jungle. Okay, I understand it's a go, I understand it's a go, and we'll be standing by on this push. Now, this is Viper One, radio check. None of the Americans know how long they may have to wait. Drug enforcement agents spend a lot of time waiting in Bolivia. Roger that, I have your same, we'll be standing by. This mission, like every mission they conduct in Bolivia, began with a tip from an informant looking for a payoff. She told the DEA she often saw planes coming in to pick up loads of cocaine. It wasn't much to go on, but because she had been reliable in the past, team leader Bob Hartman decided to send a squad led by agents Pam Brown and Joe Bond into the jungle. 
if the airplane lands, uh, the game plan is for them to run out, take the airplane down, and all these people that live in the area of the Pista are, are going to get real mad. At that time, the guys in the field are going to depend on us to jump on these helicopters and come in with the support. I'd say for every uh, 10, maybe even 15 pistas that we set up on in similar circumstances, you'll be lucky to get one airplane out of that. But I'll tell you, there, there's, there's nothing like that feeling when you're sitting there and you hear that drone in the background and he's coming in and he lands, never shuts down. All he does is turn around the other end, they come running out with the drugs and it comes together and that happens and it makes it all worthwhile. After 15 hours, it began to rain. There was no way a plane would land in this, but everyone would stay in place. Maybe the plane would come tomorrow. Another mission, this one a raid, began with this informant who claimed to know the secret hideout of three Colombian traffickers operating on Bolivian soil. It's a good time to do this kind of operation. At that time, they're sleeping, so there will be no problem. But the hideout was in an area so remote that any outsider would be recognized immediately. Team leader Reggie Gage knew that his only hope was to travel all night and take out the Colombians by surprise. We're going to conduct this entire operation in the cloak of darkness, and we need to go in very quietly. The team left at 10 o'clock with the informant leading the way. Across rough country, only he knew. Chasing a target only he could identify. Looking for men the DEA had never seen. At midnight, the team arrived at a river the informant hadn't warned them about. By 3 a.m., the road the informant led them down had disappeared into a swamp. Three of the team's four vehicles were up to their axles in mud. We stuck too. Him. Yeah, we stuck too. a.m., still nowhere near their target and losing their cover of darkness, they commandeered a farm. I need five to say eight five mobile. Let me give you the situation. We haven't met our objective yet. Uh, the roads were kind of rough. We're about halfway to our objective. We're going to get a fix on our location and we're going to call in for uh, helicopters to take us. No back. longer sure if the Colombians they were trying to catch were even out there the agents were forced to cancel their mission and call in helicopters to take them back to base. Maybe the informant had bad information, or maybe he just got them lost. 885, 8, 875 is 885 mobile. It's easy to get lost in Bolivia. Piper 6, how are you doing on water and food? How are you doing on water and food? <laughs> Meanwhile, the airstrip mission had also stalled. After two days, the team in the jungle was exhausted. The plane to pick up the coca paste had still not arrived, and their informant had disappeared. That'll take place at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll pull you out at that time. We'll put a new team in. Do you copy? Do copy, do copy. Joe and Pam got back to base at 3 a.m., 51 hours after the operation began. Pam feared the mission had been compromised. 
So today, by 5 o'clock, 5.30, we knew after 5.30 a plane wouldn't have come because of the darkness. We started thinking, well, you know, there has been a lot, there's been a lot more activity, people walking around here today. We heard a lot more noise. The weather was good. Supposedly, the, the, the coke was there. And, I, you know, I feel like we were burned. If you'd been found out, I would think that most of the people would have just left the area. I mean, not wanting to be confronted by you if you decided to come out. I don't know if we've been detected or not. I don't, I can't make that call. In spite of the problems, Hartman decided to continue the mission with a new team. They waited three more days for a plane that never came. America, got any plans for dinner? I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight. Don't be shy. You want chicken tonight simmer sauces from Ragu? Let us know. Like chicken tonight. Eight great flavors full of real vegetables and herbs, like country French chicken and chicken cacciatore. I feel like chicken tonight. Just brown the chicken, simmer, and serve. Like chicken tonight. Try Spanish chicken and creamy chicken primavera. It's going to be great tonight. I feel like chicken tonight. Hi, I'm Regis Philbin. You know, I've been suffering with back pain for years. Then I discovered Aspercream. I just rub in Aspercream for hours of relief, right where I hurt. It relieves the pain fast, and it's odor-free. And Aspercream is aspirin-free. If you're ever in Spain, you can walk down any street and find hundreds of wonderful things to buy. From hand-tooled leather, to fragrant flowers, to the most beautiful hand-painted ceramics. But occasionally, you'll need extra cash to buy them. So bring your Visa card. Because in Spain, not only do thousands more places welcome Visa, so do thousands more cash machines. And that's something American Express can't come close to. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The day has gone from bad to worse. Her simple congestion has suddenly turned into a ragged cough and burning fever. Lisa Halley has the flu, and she knows she'd better get home fast to serious medicine. Doctor recommended Theraflu, soothing hot liquid medicine to ease the body aches, the cough, the fever, because the flu's nothing to kid around with. Theraflu, your flu misery stops here. And for powerful nighttime relief, new Theraflu Maximum Strength Nighttime. I try to ignore my sensitive teeth. But they hurt. Sensodyne helps stop the pain that can make you stop brushing. Could lead even to tooth loss. And now, Sensodyne has fluoride. Fluoride, great. New Sensodyne helps stop the pain of sensitive teeth. Peter Jennings reporting. The cocaine war lost in Bolivia. We'll continue in a moment. One network will tell you her story. I love you, baby. I love you, too. Another will tell you their story. She's a sick girl. Only ABC gives you the whole story. I love him, and I love the sex. I wasn't cheating on my wife. She's the devil. I feel like I'm gonna die! Drew Barrymore is Amy Fisher Sunday. When Jeffrey catches a cold, we see the pediatrician. I love my pediatrician. He's my dad. He recommends Dimatap Elixir. Doctors have recommended the Dimatap brand over 200 million times. It relieves sneezing, nasal congestion, runny noses. And Jeffrey really likes the great taste. Doctors recommend Dimatap for their families and yours. Now get the great taste of Dimatap Elixir in new Dimatap chewable tablets. You just check select one and you get a roll of film free. At Car Drug, the Kodak Color Watch seal means you get the right look every time. With Select 2, you get a second set of prints free, in case you want to show off. You get great pictures. Select 3 means bigger 4x6 prints and a free 5x7 color enlargement. Oh, look at this one. Select 1, 2, or 3. It's your choice. Right around the corner at Car. Wolfpack and the Tar Heels get ready for bowl games. We'll have the story on Nightwatch. Part of the problem the United States faces in Bolivia is the sheer wildness of the place, from the Andes to the jungle. It is a country with a history of political instability and lawlessness. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid came here to hide. 
So did the Nazi war criminal Klaus Barbie. The communist revolutionary Che Guevara was captured and killed here in the 1960s. The poorest country in South America, Bolivia has virtually nothing the rest of the world wants to buy, except coca. Where do Americans look to see progress? Well, I think they look to see it in terms of, are there less hectares being grown? And the answer is yes here. Are we interdicting the product that's coming out? And the answer is yes. Stop for a second, right there. The State Department Inspector General says less than 1% coming out of Bolivia is being seized, and the GAO, the General Accounting Office of the Congress, says no reduction. Well, I don't know where the State Department Inspector General got his figures. I don't know how much is coming out. I don't think anybody knows how much is coming out, because there's nobody out there checking on it. But then how do so you know you're making progress? Because I know we're seizing some, and the alternative is to seize none to say, we are not going to fight this thing. The alternative is to throw up your hands and say, you can do whatever you want. Let the drug flow in the United States. This is the dilemma President Clinton will face. What the ambassador said sounds sensible. It's better to put up a fight than to surrender. But continuing to fight in defense of a failed strategy is a mistake that American presidents have made before. When things aren't going well, the U.S. government's response too often has been to escalate. Things are not going well in Bolivia. Still, funding for the anti-drug campaign here has increased over 700% in the last four years. U.S. agents in Bolivia say it's still not nearly enough. But will more helicopters, more guns, more agents, more money, more and more of the same ever make a difference? This is about as far from civilization as it gets. And it is here that Colombian traffickers have built one of the biggest, most sophisticated labs the DEA has ever found in Bolivia. Have you seen the long pipe running over to the... There's at least, this is at least 4,000, at least 4,000 kilos a week. At least. These guys have the capacity to go 24 hours a day. Now, this is the most sophisticated lab I've seen. This thing's been around for a long time. They've got two recycling and an actual chemical producing laboratories within this complex. There's over 14 buildings here. Don Ferrone has been running the DEA operation in Bolivia for the last three and a half years. He was sent here because he's considered the best the DEA has. Five years ago, there were no labs like this. Now Ferrone and his agents tell us that for every lab they seize, there are hundreds more. You didn't make America's drug policy down here, but you're charged with implementing it. If you were in total control, what would you do? The system is very, very complicated right now. We have... There, there are Bolivian... Uh, the Bol Bolivian political system needs to be notified before operations. The... Our inability to keep operational security is, is, a, is a very serious, serious problem for us, having to go through this system of uh, very elaborate notifications that quite often blows the operation. Don Ferrone is a representative of the U.S. government. He cannot say on camera what we know to be true. Virtually every American mission in Bolivia ends up being compromised because when it comes to the cocaine war, American and Bolivian interests are simply not the same. Carlos Bariga, the head of the Bolivian Special Narcotics Intelligence Force, is negotiating the surrender of a major trafficker, Ico Rivero. Rivero is turning himself in under a Bolivian government plan called the Repentance Program. The traffickers surrender in exchange for a promise they will not be extradited to the United States. The DEA had a lot of problems with that promise. They had no choice but to go along. DEA agent Keith Krakowski accompanied Bariga to pick up Rivero in the remote town of Santa Ana. Santa Ana was Rivero's choice, not the DEA's.
Coming to Santa Ana makes the DEA yeah. nervous because they have fought the traffickers for control of this town before. Once they were driven away in a shootout with townspeople who earned their living from the drug trade. The man they came for, Ico Rivero, wasn't there. That man in the white shirt is Rivero's negotiator. Krakowski feared a setup. When will his plane be here? In an hour and 50 minutes, or two hours. No, 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 that's too much time. Two hours, no more. Now we have to leave. Two hours. You have two hours. He has two hours to get here. I don't like staying here for two hours. No, I, I there are the special police, don't worry. Want me to get more special police? Yeah, do it. Thank you. As word spread through the town, dozens of people showed up at the airport. It's going to arrive at 6.15. 6.15 now? Yeah, 6.15. They left San Borja at what time? It already left. They left 10 minutes ago. The crowd grew to several hundred, including many members of Ico Rivero's family. See the plane? It's coming. You see it? Have the family go over there to say goodbye. Everybody over there. time for goodbyes. And so Rivero surrendered. But his organization remains intact, an organization worth millions of dollars that employs hundreds of people and controls more than 80 aircraft. That is the DEA's problem with the Bolivian government's repentance program. They know that one surrender doesn't cripple an organization. Somebody else will simply take control. In fact, Ico Rivero rose to power after his brother turned himself in. The U.S. justice system will probably never get hold of either of them. Do you think there's any chance that you're going to be moved to the United States? No, porque no me encuentro en... No, I don't think so, because I don't find myself in a situation that would lead to that. How long do you think you're going to spend in jail? Whatever God is willing to give me as a result of a trial. Well, not really. The Bolivian justice system will decide, and so far, four major traffickers who turned themselves in, as Ico Rivero did, have each been sentenced to fewer than six years. None was extradited to the United States. Because the DEA knows the limitations of jailing people like Ico Rivero, they have now developed another strategy. Get the planes. The DEA has an elaborate tracking system that identifies aircraft as they move in and out of remote jungle airstrips. But when they spot a plane they suspect is carrying cocaine, there is nothing they can do on their own except ask the Bolivians to seize it. This is what happens next. At the DEA's request, a search team from the Bolivian government is dusting this plane for traces of cocaine. Once again, the DEA is obliged to stand back while Bolivian law takes its course. I'm not afraid of the drug test because I've never consciously carried drugs. Although this pilot is accused of ferrying cocaine, Bolivian law allows not only him, but also his family, friends, attorneys, even a spokesman for the Pilots Association to watch 
and moreover, try to influence the findings of the Bolivian government's chemist. This part's supposed to be dry.